Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. I'm going to be baking some sea bream in a salt crust. It's an ancient technique and it is fantastic. I'm going to bake some sea bream in a salt crust, so salt baked sea bream with some herbs and things for flavour, it's going to be absolutely delicious. Alright let's get cracking on with this, so you need a bowl big enough to fit all the salt in and then also to be able to mix in the egg whites and water that we're going to need. So while you're combining that um, you want to get something a bit like wet sand, something you could make a sand castle out of. So in between me doing that, let me just explain the history of this. This dates way, way back to the 4th century BC with the Greeks. Well done, the Greeks. Philosophy, mathematics, you know, well done. And salt-baked fish. <laughs> so you can see me adding some water to it. Keep going, and I'm thinking... So this recipe isn't exact, obviously the recipe's in the description as always, but I'm just going, keep going, keep going, until I can make it sort of form a shape yeah there we go like a giant snowball yes and then will it flatten out will it hold its shape it will and of course the egg white that's in this is going to make extra certain that when it does bake it really forms a very very tight crust that will keep all of the moisture inside so here's some flavors to go inside the cavity inside this beautiful sea bream that i got from work scaled and gutted very nicely so just here yeah couple of slices of lemon, some herbs, love dill, especially with fish. Not such a big tarragon fan, but if you like the tarragon, get that in there. I've got some parsley because that's the greatest herb there is, and a little bit more lemon will fit in there. And then, yeah, I think that's about full now. You can't get anything else inside that. You could put some other spices in there if you want, if you want to make it really fragrant, you know. It's, um... You could do lots of things with this fish, get lots of different flavours in there. So there you go, two of those looking really nice, nice and snazzy. Well done. So get a tray, Just make sure your tray is big enough to fit the fish on, and then create a layer of salt that will at least be the base of the fish. Um, I'm going to sort of, I don't know, not quite a centimetre, half, you know, not quite half an inch, that doesn't really matter. As long as it's going to hold its form, and I use up the last bits of the herbs and the lemon. Again, more flavour, more fragrance. So sit your fish upon that. Top to tail, looking really nice. And now we're going to cover the top of them. Some recipes will do this where they leave the head and the tail exposed. Uh, but I, in my mind I'm thinking, now I want to make sure there's not a single bit of moisture escaping as steam while this is baking in now, I want it all to be kept inside so I'm going to completely encase and I'm being pedantic and also what I'm trying to do is recreate the shape partly because it will look nice but also when you want to start cut this open later on you want to know which bit is the fish and which shape it is so it's going to be obvious to tell where they are because you can see and now I'm taking extra care right all those little bits at the bottom make sure there's not one little bit exposed that final little bit of fanning around, making sure it's nice. And there you go, 25 minutes. And they're done. Let them rest for a few minutes. Time to quickly pan, fry, stroke, steam some asparagus. So hot, bit of olive oil, splash of white wine. Get a lid on that. Let that steam finish off cooking those beautiful, lovely asparagus spears. Here we go, that was me just checking the internal temperature. You want it to be that, 62C, 143 Fahrenheit. You could go a little bit less, you can go a little bit more. It'll be all right, but not too much. If you go too much more, you're going to have some dry fish. And this is the exciting bit. I was thinking, now, will it come off then? 
as one big piece of salt. I think, oh, I think it will. It's going to look really snazzy on the telly. Get excited. And, um, oh, never mind that bit. But still, it's still going to come away. Will it? Yes, there we go. So I think if you've got a big enough table on board to put that on, you do that at the table in front of your guests. They're going to be so impressed with you. Or just do it in your kitchen and then take it in after. But, oh, didn't it look lovely? So I'm just I'm just thinking, okay, be careful. Because this is an awful lot of salt. And you, you, the whole time I'm thinking, I wonder if this is actually going to make it a video. I wonder if I'm going to take a bite of this and it's just going to taste like salt and nothing else. But as you're watching it, I think you could probably guess it tasted all right. So let's just get around that bit and let's take that piece off. There we go. Now we're cooking. And you can see the steam escaping as soon as the salt comes off. So it's definitely worked. A bit of salad to go with it, tomatoes and chives. A bit of seasoning, obviously. Some of all that looks nice, doesn't it? Now, to, to be able to do this properly, I think you need to transfer it from the salt bed onto a board. And you can do that like that. And now, by scraping off the skin, theoretically, you should be removing any of the salt from being in contact with the flesh, which is the bit we're going to eat. So take your time, scrape it all back, the bit around the head as well, like that, and then just uh, you want to get the flesh off now, and it should come away from the bone nice and easily. Any sort of baked, roasted fish, barbecued fish, once it's on the bone, once you've cooked it, the flesh separates very naturally away from the bones. My mate Eugene will be impressed with this bit, I think. Let me know in the comments, Eugene, if you if you like my chef de rang or some or uh, maitre d skills there. I think that's coming along quite nicely. So just spoon and fork, I think, is a nice way of doing it. Get that away there, and that beautiful, moist, juicy flesh is so so gorgeous. Look at it. And then I'm going to show you how we get the rest. Of it, so what you've got to do is now you've got to take away the bone. Anyone who watched my Dover Soul Munier video would sort of okay, yeah, we we got the idea, Uncle Matt. We know we just got to pull the bone, and it comes away in one piece, and you just feel really clever because it sort of looks like a cartoon fish. <laughs> but now we've got to get the skin off it, and of course there's still a load of salt stuck on that, so rub that off. So it is a bit a bit fiddly, but hopefully you're going to find that the end result is really worth that extra bit of fuss. And it's just nice to add another technique to your to your repertoire, I think, don't you? There we go. Pop it on a plate, make it look nice. A little bit of rocket. We call that rocket. In the States you call it um, rugula, right? We call it rocket. Same thing though. Bit of lemon on the fish, of course. And that's it. So all we need now really is a nice glass of wine and I'm going to hand you back over to me. Right, okay. Salt, baked, sea bring. I've got some salad, some asparagus, some vino. Um, how good is this sea bring? What I'm hoping for is juicy moistness, not over saltiness. great oh my god it's so nice I mean I've, I've roasted whole fish before and it's nice you know get a roasted flavor but you got some dry fish you're picking them picking the bones out of you know this is juicy and moist and gorgeous I could have even gone maybe five minutes less in the oven mmm and you know yeah the fragrance of the herbs and the lemon oh yeah Okay, that is definitely worth doing. I'm doing that again. Anyway, that is how to salt bake a whole fish, be it sea bream, bass, salmon, you know, whatever you want. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. So, I'll see you in the next one. Coming soon. Bye.